Good morning, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Friday, October 24th, 2014, around 6.50 in the morning in Dorica, Massachusetts. It's going to be another dreary and damp day, but hopefully there'll be some clearing later on today. And the weekend's supposed to be nice and sunny, and it will be great to see the sunshine again. And next week, another round of Indian summer for this neck of the woods highs over 70, which is great. And we will have to sh cherish the moment because I think it's going to be a very cold winter. Most of the leaves are falling down, so you got to be aware of that. So start waking them up and putting them in bags and composting when, it, when all of them gets dry. Some news to report. Boston Bruins defenseman and captain Dano Charles is going to be out six weeks with a knee injury. That's not good. The Bruins defense core looks terrible. And... Chara being out six weeks, up to six weeks, is devastating. I think right now the Bruins look like they might be fighting for a playoff spot come March and April. But it's still early. There's a lot of things that could turn around. The Bruins could go on a major winning streak. And also, LA Lakers star player Steve Nash is going to miss the entire 2014-2015 season with a bad back. I think it's time for Steve Nash to hang up. He had a great career, but he's 40 years old, and there's not too much left in the tank for him left. He's been kind of injury prone the last few years of his career, so he's, his legacy's all cemented. He's a, he's a first ballot Hall of Fame for the Basketball Hall of Fame. He should just retire. And also, Game 3 of the World Series tonight, the Kansas City Royals, San Francisco Giants, is going to be at AT&T Ballpark. Games on Fox and ESPN Radio. And also, t this weekend's UMass Lowell Homecoming. It sh should be a great event, and the UMass Lowell hockey team, Riverhawks, played two nationally ranked opponents at the Songus Arena. Tonight, they play Michigan. It's that game's going to be a night lesson, and rumored to be in attendance for that game is Patriots quarterback Tom Brady because he went to Michigan. And also, Saturday, they play Michigan State. And that's about it on the news. My first subject of the day is my continuation series of the top 10 greatest everything and anything. My top 10 list today, I've reached the top 10 greatest Boston TV meteorologist or weatherman of all time. Boston has had some of the great weather forecasters on television f throughout the years. Some of them are amazing and stuff like that. And here's the top 10 of them of all time. Number 10 on the all-time list of greatest Boston TV weathermen of all time. Bob Copeland. Bob worked for WBZ and WCVV Channel 5 for many years, for over 30 years. Great weather forecaster. He was... The chief meteorologist back in the 70s for WCVV TV 5. He's now retired and is an artist. He comes in at number 10. Number 9 on the all time list of greatest Boston TV weatherman of all time, Todd Gross. Todd worked for WHDH TV Channel 7 for about 22 years. He was very fascinated about snow. He was a big time snow fan. In fact, during the summer, he would make snow for his backyard for his kids. Pretty amazing. He became the chief meteorologist for WHDH TV 7 when Harvey Leonard left and he was the chief until the end of 2005. He since moved on to work in Springfield and now he works in Utah on television. He comes in at number nine. Number eight on the all-time list of greatest Boston TV weatherman of all time, Mike Walkham. Mike was the chief meteorologist for WLVI TV 56 for about 13 years. He was real popular. He had some weather facts on on like his forecast for WLVI. He moved over to WCVV Channel 5 in 2007 and he stood a weekend weekend meteorologist and he might be chief meteorologist of Channel 5 when Harvey Leonard Decides to call it a career. He comes in at number eight. Number seven on the all-time list of greatest Boston TV weatherman of all time. Tim Kelly, NECN. Tim's been with NECN since 1992, since its interception. Before he worked for Prov 
in Providence and Manchester, New Hampshire. He's a very great weather forecaster. He was the chief meteorologist for NECN for years. Now he's what does the weekend, but I still love his weather forecast. He's, he's probably great. I'm surprised a major television station in Boston never like got his services like Channel 4, 5, 7, or 25 during the years. Number six on the all-time list of greatest Boston TV weatherman of all time, Bruce Schwegler. Bruce was the longtime chief meteorologist for WBZ TV. He worked from them for 19 from 1968 through 2001. Very great weather forecaster. Predicted the blizzard of 78 pretty good and other major snowstorms and hurricanes and stuff. Bruce retired to work in the in science, and he's very missed in television today. Number five on the all-time list of greatest Boston TV weatherman of all time, Al Capellian, who's the longtime vo longtime weather forecaster for. WBIN TV in Derry, New Hampshire, which used to be WNDS and WZMY. Even though it's a New Hampshire station, it's still considered Boston market, part of the Boston market. And the and out with weather forecasts are very amazing. He has a very great personality. He says good evening, and he's 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 one of the best ever to do that. I'm surprised the television station in Boston never picked up his, never signed him to a contract because he would have brought more flair and color to the weather forecast in Boston television stations. That, that's a missed opportunity. Number four on the all-time list of greatest Boston TV weathermen of all time, Dick Albert. Dick was the chief meteorologist for WCVB TV5 in Boston for about 30 years. Very good on its forecast. He also had um, Dick Albert's weather almanac for years on WCBV TV5, especially when they had Owl on newscast. He retired in 2009, and now he's a he tra now he's a traveler, and he has travel like special travel trips for the fans to go with him if he did want to go overseas and stuff. Pretty good. Number three on the all-time list of greatest TV weatherman in Boston television history. Barry Burbank. Barry Burbank's been working for WBZ TV for 36 years. Before that, he worked in Portland, Maine for a, f for a couple of years for WCSH Channel 6. And he's been with WBZ since 1978. He came in one month after the blizzard of 78. That's one of his biggest regrets. He w was in Boston Television when that blizzard of 78 hit. But he's predicted a lot of major weather weather like things plus he is really wants to nail it down 100 percent with his forecast when there's a major snowstorm coming days in advance he says we cannot be too sure as nothing's that in stone but he called and called the 1997 april food state blizzard pretty good and i'm surprised he's never became was the never was a chief meteorologist for wbz television Maybe he didn't want to be, but he's still going strong at even 36 years at WBZ. Number two on the all-time list of greatest Boston television weatherman of all time, Harvey Leonard. Harvey's been been with been in Boston television since 1977. Before that, he worked in New York and Providence, Rhode Island. First, he was the chief meteorologist for Channel 7 for years and years. And since 2002, he's worked for Channel 5 WCVB. He's one of the best weathermen of all time in Boston. He's still going strong. And everybody loves his weather forecast. But the number one greatest Boston TV weatherman of all time, Don Kent. Don Kent worked for WBZ TV for over 30 years from the 1950s through 1980s. Pretty good weather forecaster. Even though after after he retired, he still periodically appeared in, on WBZ for weather specials and stuff. And he worked on several radio stations, giving a forecast for years and up to and to his death a few years ago and he's the best weather forecast of all time in Boston television history. Coming Sunday I'm going to set talk about the top 10 greatest TV weather ladies of all time and this will be an impressive list because sadly there will be no top 10 
everything and everything because it's going to be my preview vlog for the NBA 2014-2015 season. I'll be back later on in today for two more video blogs, which will be about my takes on NBA teams tanking to get better draft picks and also my personality profile, Monty Hall. Goodbye, Facebook friends and YouTube followers here.